Hello. Today I wanted to give an update of the various movies I have gotten this summer. Um, now the first thing is a CD, uh, The Death of Slim Shady. This is Eminem's newest album. It just came out last Friday for the CD, and I got it earlier this week. Kind of wish uh, an album that came out like a month <clears throat> and a half ago or so uh, uh, would have had a <laughs> CD uh, available around that time, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so there's Slim Shady. He's uh, dead, apparently. I mean, you know, because he's blonde and doesn't have his beard now. Oh, he's giving the bird. I don't know if I could show that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, whatever. That's nice, right? Yeah. I take that up, but no. Uh, eh, these little inserts can be a bit difficult and tricky, and yeah. But yeah, yeah, he's wearing a hockey mask, which was an exclusive thing for his website. If you wanted, like, for a limited time, you could get get this in a pre-order, <clears throat> and then afterwards, it's gone. <laughs> So, yeah. Not a film, but, you know, hey. I thought I'd just throw that in there. So I've talked about, you know, 8 Mile and mentioned other stuff of Eminem, uh, uh, I'm sure, at other points. but And then also, I got Friday the 13th, the Arrow edition. Obviously, uh, I talked about that last week, last Friday, so, yeah. Um, and, uh, I have, on DVD, which might surprise some people, but I will discuss that why in a moment, but, uh, The Searchers, the 50th anniversary edition, um, and the reason I got this is, well... I mean, not only does it obviously come with two discs here. And there's Natalie Wood. And, of course, John Wayne, obviously. And, uh, yeah. So, it comes with the DVDs as well. Yeah, some other cool stuff that hasn't been, uh, I don't believe has been reprinted since, so there's that. And this was the back, but, uh, yeah, it was kind of coming off. And this was from, yeah, 2006, and this actually was, um, like 15 bucks on Amazon. This was the last one. So I'm like, that's a steal. So I thought, yeah, might as well get it before somebody else gets it. And, uh, yeah. Just, uh, a letter. Copy of a letter from, uh, uh, president of Warner Brothers in 1955 about the searchers and you know oh yeah yeah I, I can get a free 27 by 40 reproduction of the original uh, searchers poster yeah just gotta fill this out and there you go oh, with a three dollar 325 shipping as long as it's been purchased by a uh, uh, June 6th, 2006 through August 31st, and with a purchase price clearly circled. Yeah, all this stuff, uh, I think I can uh, actually manage to get that. Yeah, I, th I don't think I'm late to the party on that, so it's all right. And this was a uh, big picture thing and whatever, and... Uh, 
intercommunications office about the film and whatnot, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, it, and there's also some still pictures. There's obviously John Wayne. The numbers and everything are upside down. Yeah, obviously these are behind the scenes photos. Uh, the Searchers is a very good film. Um, in all honesty, this is uh, the best performance in my opinion. Uh, obviously everybody has their own opinion when it comes to best performances by certain people um, and I don't think this is too far off for many um, but in my opinion uh, this uh, film has uh, John Wayne's best performance and he should have been up for an Academy Award but this film notoriously did not get money for anything um, and a uh, cool uh, well ad for Turner Classic Movies and uh, you could uh, subscribe for uh, uh, now playing guide as well as uh, summer under the stars and all that stuff is what they will feature in the summer but yeah I remember seeing my grandparents had the, the had some of those. They're, they're really cool. So that's pretty cool. All those production stills and uh, an advertisement or whatever you know, could fill out to get the poster to the searchers. And another thing that's really cool is in this one, got a... Of the Searchers uh, comic book, which is a reprint from what you could have gotten back in 56. I believe it was 56. It could have been 57. Yep, 1956. Okay, so it did, this did come out the year that the film did, which would make sense, but you never know. Sometimes they kind of Stuff like that does take a bit till they actually go and uh, uh, take a while to actually get such a thing done. And uh, this is like a little collection of uh, stuff like critics and various posters, like their quotes, like what critics some have said, and you know all these posters. Primarily, like, critics and ticket buyers will declare it will be the best Western ever made. It, you know, that, it, this is mostly posters. I don't know why I said critics. Probably because looking at all the critics stuff. But, yeah. Just various stuff like this. And, uh, yeah, not too many other editions have all this stuff. Um, I believe there was a Blu-ray kind of, like, digibook. It might have had... Some of this stuff, like certain pictures and all that, and no doubt that'd be cool. But uh, you know, still, uh, I, 
will say that is something that DVDs had, which was nice. Whereas, you know, you know uh, have stuff like this. I mean, Blu-rays have had that, but then you know, uh, Blu-rays like this, or you know, a Blu-ray set like the of the Searchers would have been awesome, but they did not make such a thing outside of like you know a, a cool digi book. Um, um, and another reason I didn't get the Blu-ray version is because, well, I've heard that it is not the best transfer, and that's unfortunate. Um, I have seen a collection of Westerns with the searchers with other with films I don't own, so I thought if I did get it on Blu-ray, it'd be cool to get all that, to get it with that. So I could then perhaps see the, what the transfer looks like for myself, but yeah, people have obviously been hoping for a 4K version of this film. People were hoping and disappointed last year for Warner Brothers' 100th anniversary. They did not release such a release, or they did not put out a release like this, so, or of that, so... Obviously, that was a disappointment for many. But in two years, this will be uh, 70 years old. So I guess, you know, here's hoping that they will <laughs> release this in 4K uh, by that time, at least. You know, it'd be kind of weird if they didn't. But classic film. Excellent performance by everybody. There's John Wayne with his rifle. Uh, Ethan Edwards. Yeah, this was his favorite role that he ever played, and he uh, liked the part so much he actually uh, named his uh, like son uh, Ethan. So there you go. Yeah, they got a couple of sons. Uh, they might have one. Regardless, after this film, when he had a son, he named him Ethan. So. There you go. There were some people who said, you didn't like this part at all. Well, that's a full-on lie. Um, or you're just misinformed. Or both. I don't know. Some, some people are misinformed and also just... Uh, I don't know. People are weird. But I'll just I'll just say that. Uh, now this is a film that is a horror film which I had gotten uh, prior, like and probably should have been at, at least in the last sort of update uh, that I did for Blu-rays and such. But for whatever reason, I didn't. Uh, this is a Thanksgiving, the horror film by Eli Roth, which takes place on Thanksgiving because you know. There aren't too many uh, Thanksgiving-themed horror films, if any. And this started as a mock trailer on the... Uh, can I get this in without destroying all of this? Yes, I can. On the Grindhouse um, double feature of, you know, Planet Terror and... Uh, Death Proof by uh, Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino. So if you have this Blu-ray of of the double feature, you can watch all of the fake trailers. Like Hobo with a Shotgun, which became a film. And um, also <laughs> Werewolf Woman of the SS. Uh, don't horror film. And, uh, but yeah, Hobo with a Shotgun came from a fake trailer, and of course, now Thanksgiving. And this was something that Eli Roth wanted to make for quite some time. He finally did it. And this came out last year. Didn't get to watch it in the theater, but, you know, I have it now, so. I saw it, and uh, yeah, 
uh, in short, from what I recall, it was fine. You know, nothing too uh, f phenomenal, but nothing too horrendous. It's kind of like a, I guess, a typical modern day horror film set around a uh, holiday. Of course, I know the state with horror in general <laughs> in this day and age, but a lot of people are critical of most horror films. So that can either be seen as a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, it's not super out of the ordinary for a normal, typical slasher. I'll just say that. But it is interesting and creative of, uh, in certain aspects. And uh, I'll likely uh, talk about this in November. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. There is that. Um, now some Criterion films. I got Peeping Tom in the last uh, uh, Barnes & Noble sale. This is a film I wanted to get for quite some time. and But they had the 4K and Blu-ray uh, set coming. So I thought I'll wait to get that. And I'm glad I did because it looks amazing. Um, I had seen this before, and this came out in uh, uh, 1960, the same year as Psycho. So Psycho basically overshadowed this film. Um, and I think in various ways this is a better film, or, or Psycho is a better film in various ways, but also I do appreciate and, and uh, like this film. It's quite interesting, uh, to say the least, um, about how... How, uh, uh, photographer, filmmaker goes around with his camera and also kills people. I might talk about this at some point in the future, so yeah, I'll hold off all my general thoughts beyond I enjoy this film, so yeah, good film. And, um, and here's another film that I got. Actually, earlier in the year, like basically when this actually came out, I got it. And for whatever reason, I I don't recall talking about this, and nor was it pictured in, you know, the typical thing I do for like you know, uh, thumbnails uh, of these kind <coughs> of videos, episodes where you know take a picture of all the various movies and stuff I got. Um, and that is train spotting. Um, now, a lot of people have complained about the packaging because, well, yeah, you gotta put it through there, and it's very weird. And yeah, there's Renton, you know, Ewan McGregor. And then this is where you get your disc for the 4K. Choose 4K UHD. I'm okay. And the second disc has Big B. Choose Blue Ray. Which is pretty cool. And Whoever. Yeah, there. Can you see that? No. Well, not too well, but yeah. 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 Choose 4K Blu ray, basically. So. And then, of course, the little stuff or the little booklet that Criterion loves. It's in here. Like, they love to put that in, and I I actually appreciate that kind of stuff. It's really cool, and it's nice that a company like Criterion keeps uh, putting these out. 
you know, stuff like this out. And um, yeah, train, train spotting brand guidelines. So there you go. You can now uh, find a guide uh, to use the discs and find where all the uh, stuff is like, you know, essays and whatnot. And before it was Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ewan McGregor played Mark Renton, or Rent Boy, uh, as I guess his nickname was. But yeah. Okay, come on, get back in there. I know you can. No, you know you can. And I don't know why I'm talking to a booklet, but I guess that's where I am in life. Come on, go. Eh. There. So, yeah, weird, odd packaging. The complaints seem to be like how people were fond of the Citizen Kane uh, packaging and how to open that. And whatnot. Which I do agree, but yeah. Interesting how they have brought this back into the Criterion Collection. This used to be on Laserdisc. So, yeah. I remember hoping that this would be back on Laserdisc, and I kept putting this off on getting it on Blu ray. And then, voila, here it is on. Not just Blu-ray, but 4K in the uh, Criterion Collection. So, yeah. 4K restoration of the uh, uncut version of the film. That's awesome. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, I enjoyed this movie. Um, might not be to everyone's cup of tea, but, yeah. And also with train spotting, one thing that's kind of funny is um this next film, I got the 4K upgrade to this because I really like that, love and enjoy this film as I've mentioned this before. But I got Blue Velvet, Dennis Hopper's best performance, and in my opinion, David Lynch's best film, favorite film of his. Hopper should have won the Oscar, but. That, again, I think I've talked about that before, but, you know, that's another story, I guess. <laughs> if I didn't talk about it in full or just want to repeat it again, but, yeah. So I uh, I have a PlayStation 5 in, which can play, you know, 4K discs. Um, if you know the film, you understand the number. Ooh. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, and there's an ear. But I put the 4K disc in just to see the 4K transfer. Looks excellent. But uh, on, on the PlayStation 5, it says train spotting, 4K, you know, all that stuff. And I'm like, train spotting? Because as you saw, uh, the discs say Blue Velvet. And the Blu-ray did say Blue Velvet, but the 4K disc did not. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Hmm. 
but then I, uh, you know, I selected the to play the film because you know, not only do I want to watch the movie, but also I want to make sure that my disc for is not actually train spotting on 4K, and that I happen to just get the blue velvet sticker. But yeah, on on, on it, but. It, no, it, it was blue velvet, but for some reason it says train spotting. So that's interesting. Quite funny, in my opinion, but interesting all the same. So, yeah. So, yeah, blue velvet. Um, and I'm almost done here, but um, I got this. Uh, it's a set of movies. But I got this for around fifty dollars, and that is all the Saw films. You know, there's the Saw Ten film collection, the twentieth anniversary on Blu-ray and DVD. Now I have all the first like seven on DVD already, and also the. Uh, <clears throat> Seventh one on uh, you know Blu-ray also, but because that had some cool stuff that the DVD didn't have at that point, but yeah. So this was on the back, but it's, of course it's one of those things where it's like yeah, yeah, just stuck. So I just took that off and put that in here. Um, now something that's interesting here, uh, it has these cool pictures so that's just a thing there but yeah there's Billy the puppet isn't he nice and then there's Amanda and the reverse bear trap you know if you haven't watched these any of these movies that will probably seem weird like what the uh, there's uh, Carrie Elways in the first film Chester Bennington in the seventh film. You, uh, rest in peace to him. He was part of Lincoln Park, if you don't know. John Kramer. Guy in a pig mask. And there you go. That's just what they have for the little cool cover of that. And then uh, all of this slides out. And there you go. And, uh, yeah, they have them all here. And the Blu rays are here. And I had to rearrange some of these because they were kind of out of order, but that wasn't a big major deal. They all were here. And these are all the Blu rays. They're on top of two discs on top of, of a, like one thing there. So yeah, there's director's cut of Saw 3 on a DVD. Yeah. Always wanted to get the Saw films on Blu-ray, but... You know, doing them all individually obviously would have cost quite a bit, but hey, this came out this year and saw it at a pretty affordable price. Normally it goes for $80, but this summer it was cheaper. Would have liked to have gotten it at a cheaper price, but hey, about 50 bucks for 10 films on like on multiple discs. Yeah, that's a fine movie. And I got Jigsaw on Blu-ray also, but I didn't see Spiral or Saw 10 prior to this. And it's interesting how Saw 10 is like that Saw 10, because while it is the 10th film made in the franchise, it's also technically the 9th film uh, in terms of the story, because, you know, there is a story to the Saw films overall, um, if you have not seen them. Just to let you know. Um, of course, everybody thinks, you know, 
the Saw films are overtly graphic, and uh, while the sequels definitely do, and the spinoff of Spiral definitely get quite graphic, the <clears throat> the first one doesn't have a whole lot of graphic stuff. I mean, yeah, there are people in traps, but all of the graphic, uh, gory stuff that you see or you think of with Saw is primarily in the uh, sequels. And also, yes, it includes seven unrated films, so the first seven are unrated, primarily on the Blu-ray <coughs> and DVDs, but then the last three on here are all rated R. Um, but yeah, Spiral, I would say, is not Saw 9. It's like the Creed films. Creed is not Rocky 7. It's the seventh installment of the franchise, yes, but it is a spin-off, and Rocky is not the main focus, even though in the first two he is quite uh, important. At the end of the day, those are not Rocky films. They exist in the same universe, or like, that, and that's the best comparison. So, in a way, Saw 10, they could have called it something else. But I don't know what offhand. I mean, I guess Saw 9, but... Uh, the eighth installment's called Jigsaw, so, you know, there you go. Um, and I might talk about this more in depth um, in the uh, next month for October. So, yeah, uh, in depth in the sense that I'll actually give, like, general overview, because, you know, when I got this, I had, like, spent a week just watching these films bringing me back to watching these when I was like 13 when I first saw the first four and then I constantly got them the next ones as they came out because for seven years they made one film a year and yeah it's quite amazing how what they did and um just put this right here because now I'm gonna I talked about this uh, film in some regard anyway, but I got a new version of it now, so some of this stuff is old, so please bear with me, but yeah, uh, here is Taxi Driver, my DVD version, for like the 40th anniversary edition, but yeah, Martin Scorsese's definitive urban masterpiece. I'm not going to open all these. Um, um, but yeah. I was also 13 when I got this and saw it. and uh, I, I enjoyed it. It's a very good film. Obviously, I've talked about this before, so no real shock about my sentiments on it. But So that was the DVD. And then I got this Blu-ray, which... I'm never going to get rid of because this has uh, cool little cards about of the film. Poster. There's Jody Foster, Robert De Niro. Sybil Shepherd. De Niro and Scorsese. Keitel, Harvey Keitel and De Niro. And Travis with his mohawk.
guess spoilers uh, he bleeds at the end spontaneously so spoiler to that if you've ever watched it but yeah that this has obviously the blu-rays pretty much have all the same stuff on them uh, but I liked this if I remember getting this when did this come out 2011 yeah I got this so this is like 35 years old um, and uh, got it at Best Buy remember Best Buy they when they actually sold like DVDs Blu-rays and all that stuff yeah they don't anymore but yeah they this was actually quite affordable it wasn't a, a stupid price or anything so yeah, got that, got this, enjoyed it, and, um, and then I got another Blu-ray. The 40th Anniversary Edition. Which, uh, the second disc has a DVD for, like, the making of Taxi Driver and Storyboard film to film comparisons animated photo galleries and stuff which I, I thought it was odd that they you know not only did they uh, have this in uh, two discs which you know the previous one only had one blu-ray so you could definitely fit all that on one but the second disc was uh, you know a DVD not necessarily a bad thing but just kind of odd uh, in my opinion uh, and so the latest thing I got with Taxi Driver is uh, the 4K upgrade in Steelbook and I know not everybody loves the Steelbooks or anything and, and I get it some Steelbooks don't look that great but I think this looks pretty cool I know Columbia had a, a version of this out a couple of years ago. I wasn't able to get it because by the time I knew about it, it was all sold out and you could only find it on eBay and people were, if it wasn't some ridiculous price, it was also kind of false, like brand new. Oh, cool. And it's not wrapped or anything and they're opening it up and showing the disc like, well, it's not brand new anymore. It's like new. You know, you might not have watched it, but. Oh yeah, there's the uh, digital copy, but I already used it, so meh. So yeah, the 4K Ultra High HD Blu-ray disc, as well as the normal Blu-ray disc. And the film looks amazing. I'm going to show the other discs, but you know what? I, I'm doing this because you actually get to see stuff here. And I guess I could have kept the discs in because it wasn't like others were there. But yeah, we are the people. Or we are the people. Or we, we are the people. Doesn't sound the same. So there you go. He's rocking his sunglasses. And, you know, they did split some of the special features on the two discs. Sort of like the 40th Anniversary Edition, where some of the stuff is on a, the DVD. <clears throat> and while before, uh, you'd get the... Uh, Blu-ray, you got the 40th anniversary. Yeah, on the Blu-ray, you got the 40th anniversary Q&A also. With, uh, and you also have all the commentaries there. And uh, Martin Scorsese on Taxi Driver, producing Taxi Driver. God's Lonely Man, Taxi Driver Stories, Travis's New York, Travis's New York location. 
<clears throat> Influence and Appreciation on Martin Scorsese Tribute Theatrical Trailer. And on the uh, 4K disc, you have The Making of Taxi Driver, which is a great making of documentary, by the way. It's a story film comparison. So all the stuff on the DVD on the 40th anniversary disc are essentially now on the 4K disc, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. And a 20th anniversary re-release trailer. So, yeah. I kind of like Taxi uh, taxi Driver. You know, but... Anyway... That's really all I've got right, uh, to say at the moment about the new stuff. Yeah, all cut up in the few that I forgot to mention uh, any last time. Well, I've now settled all that now, so there you go. I hope uh, this was of interest. I know this was over 40 minutes now. Apologies for that. I tried to be as quick as I am, but then when you have various movies like this, you know, I obviously talk quite a bit, so apologies for all that, but you know, I hope this was of some interest, at least we can maybe uh, converse in the uh, comments if you'd like, you don't have to, uh, all up to you. I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, please have a great day. Please have a great week. And, uh, yeah, I will see you all next time. Great weekend. Please take care.